Okay, so I am fully aware this is not real estate content, but I refuse to limit myself to real estate only. Guys, you can only make so many home prices are going up videos. And they are, by the way. Boston is the, the nation's hottest housing market. But today, I had to share my thoughts and feedback about the Dynasty 10-part Patriots documentary on Apple TV. If you haven't seen it, you won't know what I'm talking about. If you have seen it, I can probably jump right in and you're thinking what I'm thinking, okay? Um, so again, not real estate. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute because different premise here. But on the dynasty, let me start like top, top line stuff. What a legendary hatchet job. Just sticking it in Bill. Just sticking it in Bill. I can't believe that this propaganda piece is now... The defining version of my life as a football fan from age nine to now 36 years young, this director, Matthew Hamachek, one of the great propagandists of our time. I mean, honestly, cl clap it up. What a masterful rewriting of history on the behalf of a billionaire, Bob Kraft. <laughs> Let's talk about the nerve of this fucking guy, okay? He is delivered, okay, beginning in 2001. He is six Super Bowl victories with three other appearances, two decades of excellence from the head coach of his team, right? Unprecedented level of, of competition and dominance in the history of the league. How many AFC championship games in a row? Really just unprecedented in sports. Um... So naturally, when things, when things fizzle out, what do you do? You know, you, you praise his accomplishments. You build a statue, right? Uh, no, no. What does he get here? He gets railroaded. He gets a professionally produced smear job in which the, the team owner deludes himself into more credit for the team's success than is appropriate. And the actual head coach and culture builder, the real culture builder, is basically called like a good good X's and O's guy, a very good elevated, elevated defensive coordinator. But you know, let's let's list off a couple things he he is credited for. Let's uh, defending a triple murderer, <laughs> according to Jonathan Kraft, sabotaging the 2017 season, even though they came you know, within a, a touchdown of, of winning the Super Bowl, uh, sabotaging that from, from pretty much beginning to end, uh, working to intentionally sabotage his single best player, the greatest player in the history of the game, uh, IMO, from about 2008 to 2019. Um, he's also credited with swinging the 2016 election. He's credited with the, the election of Donald Trump. They might as well have accused him of uh, of swinging the election entirely, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't say he was in the Capitol wearing a Viking helmet on January 6th. They they, they pretty much skipped two Super Bowl victories. Uh, the O three, the O four teams, though decidedly too Belichick, too Belichickian to get in the airtime. Those two teams, and what they did instead of that, said for let's forego that. Uh, you know. Let's dedicate entire episodes to Spygate and Deflategate. Okay, and and here's the thing. I thought this was I thought this was going to be a football documentary where we talked about Brady's best throws and Belichick's great you know maneuvers, the little ingenious plays and coaching points that created a dynasty. It is after all you know that when I hear the dynasty, that's what I really thought it was about: the intentional safety, giving Peyton Manning the, the ball in overtime. You know, there was barely any any Manning versus Brady, right? The greatest rivalry in football history. The game plan against the Chiefs, I guess that's like not as as famous. But, you know, running the ball on third and four early in that game, running down their throat. Bad example, okay? That's just top, top of my head. Troy Brown, like punt return, like that in the AFC Championship game in 2001, somehow still got skipped over. There's so much. Troy Brown ripping the ball out of the San Diego Chargers secondary's hand when the game was was won. I, uh, the list goes on. Gerard Mayo, pay attention. Because if you deliver six Super Bowls in two decades of unprecedented winning football, it's not enough. 
it's just it's not enough. You got to be able to give Jonathan a, a, a lap dance. And and Gerard Mayo, by all accounts, great, amazing human being, great guy. I'm rooting for him. I feel worried about him. I feel worried about him. That is my feeling as a fan today. This was a coordinated attack on the person I believe is the inarguable greatest head coach of all time. I'm not saying he's the best coach today, right? I'm on re- I'm personally among friends, the best living football coach. I'm on record as saying just took a new job in Los Angeles. That's it's off topic. Topic for a different football related podcast. <laughs> but this was this was a concerted public relations assassination with Bob in the depository and Jonathan on the grassy knoll. And I'm sorry to say, no Linda Holiday. She's not there to scoop his brains back into his head. No, I can't say that. I can't say that. I'm a professional, professional person. He hasn't responded, right? I want, I need a robust response. Robust. We need crisis management. Get the wolf on the line. It's just Drew Rosenhaus and a mustache holding the mug. Bill, if I'm curt with you, it's because time is a factor. <laughs> I think fast. I, I talk fast. I can't believe I'm putting this up. Robust, Bill. Robust response. Nantucket, that's 30 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. Look, this is the problem. I'm not saying Bob Kraft is a bad person. I'm definitely not saying he's a bad businessman because that obviously is not true. Clearly a business mastermind, great at getting an edge. As, as a regular real estate broker like me, just your average guy on the street, you have to admire the real estate and business acumen of this person. What I am saying is he's not a great owner, right? Tony Maserati, Maz says this best. When you're a team owner, you are a steward of the team for the city, for the community. And, uh, you know, for the whole region and the top down ownership mentality, not just the dollars and cents, but the culture, the mindset matters. It affects winning and losing. I think the premise of this documentary, or at least one of the premises was look at what was accomplished, especially in the, the last decade in spite of Bill, right? Now, the way I see it, Bill has plenty of flaws, the, the best Coach of all time, but plenty flawed. Uh, I can I can name a few draft picks in particular. Like I see it as look at all that was accomplished sometimes in spite of ownership, which was less than willing to spend on players than other teams. I mean, now it's gone complete reversal because this was so heavy handed. It's a little strong. Okay, chances are the the crafts were probably paying more for a head coach than any other team during most of this time. But I think this documentary is, is mostly craft trying to rewrite himself as Forrest Gump into all these historically favorable events and, you know, passing the buck on any decisions that haven't aged particularly well. This is a thing that goes on. I feel like with rich old successful guys, you know, and I I pause to acknowledge again, Nobody bought the team for Bob Kraft. He did it himself. I'm not crazy. This guy has forgotten more about business than I'll never know. I'll I'll ever know. Uh, I mean, really, self-made for sure. But you know, old billionaires, right? They tend to go back. (laughs) They feel like they're the only guys that uh, saw the board from the very beginning, saw the whole chessboard. And there is definitely, you read a couple of these old billionaire guy autobiographies. Most recently, I read ones by Sam Zell and Ted Turner, who are got like, you come away loving these guys, loving these guys. But there's always an element of, yeah, I knew the, the dot-com bubble was going to burst, and, and I knew the real estate market was, I'm sure you did every time. I'm sure you did every time. It seems like they're constantly given... It, now, these guys were... They're bad examples because they really were like early adopters in a lot of ways. But there is this rewriting of history that uh, they seem to be Forrest Gumping themselves 
into the, uh, the, the perfect situation every time. I, I, again, I like those guys. Kraft as my, my local team owner, not the biggest fan of. Anyway, that's my review of the dynasty. I would dispute any claim to it as the defining football documentary of the Patriots. That is yet to be filmed and released. It would be an insult to me as a lifelong fan to call it that. Even former players have come out. Devin McCourty, Rodney Harrison. Not outright calling it a smear job, but that's that's what it is. At a minimum, it is a retelling of history, probably as part of a pro football Hall of Fame bid by an 82-year-old man. Uh, I'm not saying he's the worst owner. The NFL ownership circle is like a cabal of bad guys from a Metal Gear Solid sequel. Uh, good businessman, you know, not pro football Hall of Fame worthy. IMO. I said that twice in this. An idiot. Uh, every once in a while, there's a caller to Felger, and it sounds like they'll call up and be like, well, you know what? The team is making money. And uh, if you look at Kraft and what they're going to do, this happens with the Red Sox too. Like a Red Sox fan will, so-called fan will call up and be like, well, you know, the money, the business is making money hand over fist. Why would John Henry want to? That's, this is like, it doesn't matter. You have to separate. We're not cheering on the money they're making, right? This is our, this is our local team. They are stewards for the team, right? I haven't watched a game, baseball game since, 2016 um but i don't need to to know that the story of the red sox and all of their (laughs) personnel moves for the last seven or eight years is really because a billionaire got bored he got you know tired of the, uh, the thrill of the chase with baseball is gone with john henry and now it's just a spreadsheet item you know look let me wrap it up I'm fully aware, again, the question you're asking yourself right now is, what does this have to do with real estate or personal finance? I was sold a false bill of goods by this guy, says he does real estate, uh, tries to help me save money, make money. That's usually what this YouTube channel is about. I'm no longer limiting myself to that, and I also feel like this qualifies as local interest. This is a local highlight type topic. So it's the Boston area. You know, everybody on the South Shore here, we're, we're all mostly Patriots fans. Going forward, I am expanding the local interest type topics. The New England Patriots are obviously one that qualifies. I'm not going to start posting my mock drafts just yet. I have been playing with that pro football focus mock draft tool. Uh, when I, I've been getting pretty deep. I've been doing like full seven rounders. I don't know any of these guys. You know, how am I supposed to know, you know, who's playing for Western Kentucky a receiver these days, but maybe we'll do an NFL draft live stream though. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to the fellas about that. That could be interesting. What local interest stories do you want to hear? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.